there's a bit of irony to the fact that a show called Missing in Action has itself gone missing in action. But what matters is that we're back, and there's some unfinished business when it comes to Sonic the Hedgehog's missing friends, which we last checked in on nearly two years ago. Back then, we focused on the lost members of the Chaotix and Ray the Flying Squirrel. However, there are still more characters to track down, and they're all connected by the arcade curiosity known as Sonic the Fighters. So it's time to cast a searchlight on these mostly forgotten fighters from Sonic's past. Welcome to Missing in Action, where we take a look back at game elements that have mysteriously gone missing. Now, while Sonic the Fighters might be the starting point for most of these characters, one of them made their debut two years earlier on the Game Gear in Sonic Triple Trouble. Yep, that's good old Mac the Weasel. Wait, what? Well, as it turns out, Fang the Sniper was renamed to Knack the Weasel to be more child-friendly for his English debut, although every game since has reverted to what's become known as his working name, Fang. And he has appeared in more Sonic games than any other of these forgotten characters. It wasn't much of a start, though. Despite being one of the build troubles in Triple Trouble, Fang only appeared during the special stages and would challenge Sonic for the Chaos Emeralds. He mostly used his air bike and would attach various weapons in a vain attempt to best the Hedgehog. Despite only appearing in that limited fashion, Fang would return a year later as a playable character in the Game Gear Racer Sonic Drift 2. Here, his air bike received its official name, the Marvelous Queen, which could accelerate quickly, but at the cost of its handling. In addition, Fang's special ability allowed him to toss out oil in an attempt to spin out other racers. But Fang's final playable appearance was indeed Sonic the Fighters, although this time without the Marvelous Queen. He instead relied on a pop gun, as he's not especially strong otherwise, except for his tail, which he used for attacks and to spring into the air. Yet, despite all of these appearances, his personality isn't exactly well-defined, beyond being described as a treasure hunter in the Triple Trouble manual. But that, combined with having Sniper in his name, has led many to envision him as greedy and sneaky. And yeah, there might be some speciesism mixed in there. He is a weasel, after all. Although, from what we see in his debut, he's more often defeated by his own traps than anything else. Maybe he orders his stuff from Acme, which doesn't exactly have the best track record. That said, in order to be a true fighting game, Sonic the Fighters was going to need a few more characters. And that's where the rest of this forgotten crew comes into play. The first was Bean the Dynamite, a duck that specializes in bombs, but you had to be careful, as he's vulnerable to the explosions too. Otherwise, he was able to use his beak like a punch combo. But Bean also has a bit of a unique history himself, as he wasn't an entirely original design. Instead, his general appearance is heavily inspired by another Sega AM2 game, 1988's Dynamite Ducks. Placed side by side, you can see the clear resemblance between Bean and his predecessors, Bin and Pin only now with green feathers instead of red or blue, and dropping the bow ties in favor of a scarf. Wait a second! Was that the f***ing Colonel? Uh, anyway, that uncanny resemblance, not to the Colonel, has since been given an official explanation, at least according to the official Japanese guidebook for Fighters Mega Mix, a Sega AM2 crossover fighter for the Sega Saturn, where Bean appeared as an unlockable character. It states that Bean is the son of one of the dynamite ducks, Bin, and sure enough, he even has an unlockable costume that makes him look like his father. But beyond the family resemblance, he's never really been given much of a personality. His fast movements and proclivity towards bombs give the impression of a wild card, and this was pushed even further into the fan mindset thanks to the Archie comics. There, he's so extremely eccentric that he barely takes anything seriously, even pointing out once that his word bubbles were upside down. Oddly enough, the other character that debuted in Sonic the Fighters has a more defined personality, sort of, because none of it comes from the game itself. Instead, it all comes from the official guide for Fighters Mega Mix. Bark the Polar Bear is described as a nature lover with a good heart, but can be blunt despite his shyness. And that last trait is the one Archie Comics seemed to have honed in on as he's completely silent. Like Bean, Bark was an unlockable character for that Sega Saturn fighter, where his alternate costume was a Santa outfit. 
You know, because of the cold, and maybe to emphasize his kind nature. Despite Bean and Bark's inclusion in Fighter's Mega Mix, no other Sonic characters made it into the game, not even as a cameo, which makes sense since Sega AM2 are the creators of Bark and Bean. However, only Bean appeared as a special unlockable character in AM2's Virtua Striker 2, as part of MVP Yuki-chan's team, and it's one of the few times Bark and Bean are not together. In fact, they're often paired together in Sonic comics along with Fang the Sniper as Team Hooligan, which has become the accepted name for these guys in the fanbase. But if you want to go truly obscure for Sonic the Fighter's characters, it's hard to top Honey the Cat, who almost wasn't a character at all on account of the fact that she was cut from the initial release of the game. However, in true cat nature, she eventually landed on her feet when she was officially reinserted back into the game for the HD re-release 16 years later on the PS3 and Xbox 360. And, like Bean, her design is based off an existing AM2 character, in this case being Honey, or Candy as you may know her from the English release, of Fighting Vipers. Honey shares the same outfit, fighting style, and moves as her human counterpart. This is because Sonic the Fighters was initially designed around fighting vipers, only with Sonic characters instead, and she was likely made a cat because many of Honey the Human's moves were named after cats, like Cat Scratch or Cat Punch. Interestingly, this also technically makes her the first cat character in a Sonic game. Big the Cat was just too slow. Too Strangely, slow. Honey the Cat was able to glide in the game like Knuckles thanks to the wings on the back of her dress. It still doesn't make a lot of sense, but she is basically just a bonus character. That would explain why she has no real discernible personality, as there wasn't really a reason to give her one. Although, once again, the Archie comics help fill in the blanks, portraying her as friendly yet shrewd when it comes to her fashion business, honey brand clothes and accessories. And perhaps unsurprisingly, this is it. She's made no other appearances outside of Archie comics, which makes sense seeing as she is indeed a cut character. As for the rest of the characters, that was pretty much the end of the line, with one big exception which we'll get to soon enough. Otherwise, the members of Team Hooligan disappeared from the face of the Earth, making only small cameo appearances for the next 20 years. One of the first was in the Game Gear exclusive Tales Adventure. Fang can be seen in the icon for the Fang item, which makes every destroyed enemy drop a ring, tying into his treasure hunting background. And all of the Sonic the Fighter characters appear as collectible figurines in Shenmue 1 and 2, with the obvious exception of Honey. As for Team Hooligan, the last time Sonic Team acknowledged their existence was in Sonic Generations, where wanted posters for all three could be found in City Escape. Fang's poster even lists both of his names, suggesting that Knack the Weasel is his real name, while Fang the Sniper is his alias. It also states that he's wanted for theft and extortion, while Bean and Bark are shown together yet again, and stated to be armed and dangerous. And that would have been it for the hooligans if it weren't for Christian Whitehead and his team bringing them all back in Sonic Mania as part of Mirage Saloon. Not only can wanted posters be found for them in Act 2, one of the three, chosen randomly, arrives to destroy the tornado at the end of Act 1. All of them then return as illusions as part of Heavy Magician's boss fight. The Fang illusion bounces around on his tail while firing his pop gun, the Bean illusion tosses bombs, and the Bark illusion pounds the ground to make debris fall from the sky. And seeing as Sonic Mania is a celebration of Sonic, it was a wonderful surprise to see these three return, even if these aren't technically the characters themselves, on account of them being illusions. Still, it begs the question, could we actually see even more of the hooligans in a future Sonic game? Could Christian Whitehead's team possibly bring back Mighty and Ray from our previous episode? It's more than a little shocking that something covered and missing in action could actually return. Up until now, our subjects have felt like lost concepts that were simply abandoned. But never count out fans with an affinity for the obscure. What about you, though? Would you like to see the return of the hooligans in a bigger role? And is there anything else that's gone missing that you want found? Let us know by posting in the comments below, and we may feature it in a future episode. Thanks for watching, and make sure to click that subscribe button for future Missing in Action episodes, and even more from Game Explain.